Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Hello, sir. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Ray Romano, Sebastian Maniscalco, and music from Paul Russell with Cleto and the Cletones. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. Exactly three weeks from Christmas uh, and today. Are you um, four nights into the Elf on the Shelf if you're a parent of young kids? Last night, once again, we got in bed. Uh, we just start drifting off to sleep. And my wife goes, oh, we forgot to move the Elf. And so downstairs I went to find a new shelf for the Elf, which I'm not sure our kids even buy anymore. Our son, Billy, is six now. The other night, he kind of muttered something about it being us moving the Elf. And I said, well, why do you think it's me and Mom that move it? And he said, without even looking up, he said, because it is. <laughs> and yet still, for some reason, I'm running downstairs in my underwear at midnight to move this thing. <laughs> it's very easy to forget the elf. So as a reminder and as a service to all the moms and dads out there who are doing this, here's an idea for your elf tonight. It's just almost midnight. Hopefully the kids are asleep. Go get the elf, uh, put him in the medicine cabinet, and <laughs> let him go to town on the Latuda or whatever you got in there. <laughs> Tonight on Monday Night Football, the Bengals were in Jacksonville. Last night, Taylor Swift was in Green Bay playing the Packers. Here she is walking into the stadium, all decked out in red with Brittany Mahomes, the wife of Patrick. And here she is uh, leaving the game after the Chiefs loss. Yeah, you're always safe just saying hi. It was the first time that the Chiefs have lost with Taylor in attendance, and I have to say, wasn't a great performance for Swift. Her applause was disorganized, especially in third down situations. She had a tough time cheering against the more experienced Packers fans. It's easy to forget. She's still a rookie. She still has a lot to learn. But whenever Taylor Swift is in a town, it's a big deal. The local NBC station in Green Bay even had a reporter stationed at the airport. Taylor, it looks like, has slipped away in a moment in time as the two vehicles that brought her to Lambeau Field drove right by us here roughly 20 minutes ago here at Austin Straubel International Airport. And then roughly 10 or 15 minutes ago, we did see her jet taxi right by us. And we also got to meet some young Swifties coming here just to see Taylor. You, you know, they're on the plane. And so in a way, it's sort of like you've seen them, but you haven't. Yeah. I mean, not sort of so much as exactly, but yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> thanks for driving us here in 14 degrees, Dad. <laughs> Speaking of cheeseheads, Donald Trump was up very late last night, <laughs> thumbing out a rebuttal to a story in the new book by former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. At 12.56 a.m., he posted, Crazy Liz Cheney, who suffers from Trump derangement syndrome at a level rarely seen before, writes in her boring new book, that Kevin McCarthy said he came to Mar-a-Lago after the rigged election because the former president was depressed and not eating. That statement is not true. I was not depressed, I was angry, and it was not that I was not eating, it was that I was eating too much. That's why they sent Kevin in. For once, I believe him, by the way. I don't, why would he, why would he mention this? I don't get, he can't reason, whenever someone says, he has to say the opposite. He can't help it. Call him unstable, call him dumb. He says, I'm a stable genius. You mentioned his crowd size was small. He says it was the biggest crowd in history. Say he wasn't eating, he says, I was eating too much for no reason. <laughs> I, would like to, I would like to have some fun with this and see what we can get him to contradict. <laughs> like I say, Trump looks terrible in women's shoes. And he's like, no one looks better than Trump in women's shoes. <laughs> when I wear pumps, People come up and they say, they come up with tears in their eyes, say, sir, we've never seen calves as sexy as yours. <laughs> and he went on, he said, but that's not why Kevin McCarthy was there. He was at Mar-a-Lago to get my support and to bring the Republican Party together. 
only going to, well, in that case, file that under wasted trip because <laughs> Trump misspelled Kevin two times in one post. The guy who is constantly questioning Biden's mental sharpness cannot spell one of, not only one of the most common names in the world, also the name of his co-star in Home Alone 2. Okay. His favorite son. Trump was in, um, in Cedar Rapids on Saturday where he floated. It has to be one of his most nonsensical election notions yet. In 2016, we just ran the whole East Coast of the country, and that made up for California, which I actually believe that if they didn't have rigged elections out there, if they didn't have all the paper ballots, you know, they send out like 36 million ballots, and nobody knows where the hell they're going to or coming from. But I think if you had a real election and Jesus came down and God came down and said, I'm going to be the scorekeeper here, I think we'd win there. I think we'd win in Illinois, and I think we'd win in New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, if Jesus comes down, you're going straight to hell. That's number one. That's, that's no White House, no jail. Jesus is like, you're out. And number two, you have about as much chance of winning California and New York as you do of winning an ice dancing medal at the Olympics. Zero. <laughs> These rallies of his, they've become like a professional wrestling event. Even Fox News had to break in this weekend to announce that what he was saying wasn't true. Every rally now, he, he complains about the election stolen. He says windmills are killing whales. He calls Chris Christie a fat pig. And then he closes with um, his signature female weightlifter routine. He got the parents, the sisters, everyone's there so proud. This young girl, she's a weightlifter. She's a champion. They have a quarter of an ounce and a quarter of an ounce. She grabs it. Mom, I'm going to make you so proud, Mom. She's watching up. Then she gets down. Ah, 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 Anyway, hand me those, um, hand me those nuclear codes again, will ya? <laughs> and a scoop of that Metamucil while you're at it. When Jesus does come back, he's gonna be so impressed by Trump's commitment to Christmas. The Orange Messiah has a lot of stuff for sale, including wrapping paper from his Never Surrender Christmas collection featuring a mugshot photo, ironically taken moments after he did surrender for the tree. You can get a 3D replica of Mar-a-Lago. You can buy a mini faux gold Trump hotel. You can get a Cody Foster designed <laughs> blown glass Donald Trump head, a handmade Trump Christmas stocking full of Slovenian Sudafed. There's a Donald Trump <laughs> elf on the shelf. Um, and don't worry, kids, if you do anything bad, he's done a lot worse. And finally, <laughs> what might be the greatest Donald Trump gift of all? Introducing the one and only original and newly redesigned Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear's thumbs up. Let everyone know he will always be there for you. Just find a secret zipper and pull out the American flag themed blanket and show your patriotism by proudly displaying Trumpy Bear in your home. Wait, wait, what comes out of the secret zipper? Because it's, uh, you know, if you buy two Trumpy Bears, you get his son, Cocaine Bear, for free. <laughs> You know, but we are going to need something lovable to hang on to because George Santos is officially a former congressman. On Friday, Santos was expelled <laughs> by a vote of 311 to 114. Um, so back to stealing puppies from the Amish, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the House maintenance crew wasted no time changing the locks to his office. <laughs> How funny it would be if they opened that door today and a hundred purses came tumbling out. <laughs> and while it's confusing as to why they would have to change the locks on an office he can't go into anymore, apparently, even though he's been expelled, this is crazy, legally, he still has access to the house floor, the dining room, the cloak room, and the gym, which that won't be awkward at all. You vote him out and you're still showering with him. <laughs> George Santos is basically an ex who still has the key to our apartment. 
And here's an interesting factoid. You remember that Congressman Joe Wilson from South Carolina, the one who shouted, you lie at President Obama during the State of the Union address? Well, he voted not to expel George Santos, so I guess his position on lying has evolved. <laughs> In the 234 years of the House of Representatives, George Santos is only the sixth member to have ever been expelled. The last congressman to get kicked out was a Democrat named James Traficant, from Ohio back in 2002. Um, I want you to disregard all of the opposing counsel has said. I think they're delusionary. I think they've had something funny for lunch in their meal. I think they should be handcuffed to a chain link fence, flogged, and all of their hearsay evidence should be thrown the hell out. And if they lie again, I'm gonna go over and kick them in a crotch. Thank you very much. So Santos is in very good company. How long before George Santos on a reality show? Big Brother and the Mass Singer, they gotta be fighting over this guy like Nike and Adidas trying to sign Michael Jordan. But for now, at least, uh, he's out of a job, and, and we had to fire two of our writers, too. They have nothing to do now. But we've honestly grown quite fond of George Santos's shenanigans, and he, he will be missed. He'll be missed, but he will not ever be forgotten. Uh, we of fabricating almost every single part of your life. Will you remember me? George Santos is, I'm just a regular person, Pierce. Don't let your life pass you by. I'm not a fraud, I'm not a fake. Keep not Guess what, Rosa Parks didn't sit in the back and neither am I gonna sit in the back. I'm gonna give the fashion review of the new lunar suit. Today I rise to honor the beginning of Yom HaHatzmut, Israel's Independence Day. You're not Jewish. Well, I, I never said I was. Guys, I'm Jew-ish. I'm Jew-ish. I actually went to school on a volleyball scholarship. I put myself through college and got an MBA from NYU. And... Most people lie on their resumes. He is George Santos, also Anthony DeVolder, and at least once a drag queen named Katara Ravache. Were you ever a drag queen in Brazil? <laughs> I was not a drag queen in Brazil, guys. I was young and I had fun at a festival. I will remember you. Let's go, man. Will you remember me? Ow. You gotta relax. You're assaulting me. Since I've gotten here, uh, I can chew and walk gum at the same time. I can chew gum and walk at the same time.